Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of HPE Discover 2024. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, sitting alongside my co-host and co-analyst, Dave Vellante. Dave, this has been a great show. We're about to welcome back uh, an illustrious CUBE alum. Yes, well, so third year in a row for, for having Red Hat on. Red Hat is Smoking hot, they're red, they're so hot. <laughs> red hot, they're red hot, exactly. I know, we, we can rename them right now. So I'd like to welcome back to the show Ryan King, Senior Director, Global Hardware Partner Ecosystems at Red Hat. Thanks so much for returning to theCUBE. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I think uh, three years ago when I did this the first time, um, it was, um, uh, quite the experience, I was fresh into the role. Um, I, my background, I've always been in this business, in this industry, um, but about the 2017 era, I started to look into what was happening with generative AI, and I really helped bootstrap the relationship we had with NVIDIA, and so that got me on the radar to say, hey, what should be our broader strategy for infrastructure and infrastructure partners, and that's how I stepped into the role. And one of my first forays was with HPE around you know, GreenLake, so it's great to come back and talk about that journey, but also the additional uh, focus on you know AI and vert, which seems to be the two topics that everybody is having you know deep strategic planning around. Oh, absolutely! And Red Hat is so many places with, with between OpenShift and 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 RHEL, the, the entire open source software. What you've done with Instruct Lab, I'd love to get your point of view on that. But how, did, hit hit the escape key for us and help us understand AI's just broadly point of view or Red Hat's broadly, their point of view on, on AI. What's the strategy, how should we think about it? Yeah, so um, of course, like everything's founded and open and open source with Red Hat and it all builds up from what we do with you know, RHEL and above that with OpenShift. The, um, but of course, the, the portfolio part of it, you know, everybody knows OpenShift and um, now OpenShift AI as being you know, two forays as platforms that we're offering uh, into this space. Um, also, they may have heard at Red Hat Summit um, something called Lightspeed that brings generative AI into the experience of using our products, and so you're seeing that being placed to use AI to use our products and platforms within it, so it's AI within, but also AI as a platform. Um, our point of view is um, we've had a very successful journey I think you've seen the analyst, the analyst uh, reports that have us in the very far right upper hand quadrant um, for you know, container platforms. It's kind of like watching the, um, we used to watch the DVD screensaver, <laughs> they like hit the corner, right? Like I'm like, you know, something momentous, they actually drew the dot, it went outside the square. So like we feel so strong in the container space and in the hybrid cloud space um, that we set like, you know, the standard for like how DevOps should be done in a cloud native, you know, um, uh, process around DevOps. Now what we're doing is we're taking that and we're making an MLOps journey. So what we did for DevOps with OpenShift, we're now doing for MLOps with OpenShift AI. And so to further that, we've introduced RHEL AI. And so RHEL AI um, is it, at its basics level is, is it's RHEL. Um, but it's in a new uh, format called image mode, which we can talk a little bit about. Um, it includes Instruct Lab, uh, it includes the runtimes, and then it includes the Granite model. And so the model, there's both an English, uh, English language model uh, as well as a um, code model for it. And with, um, with that, um, we're providing um, indemnity around that, IP indemnity. So for customers that are looking, you know, how can I in a data sovereignty you know, space around like you know, data is IP, I want to hold on to my data, but I want to take these foundational models and I want to fine tune them for my company's use case. And so what Rel AI do is doing is making, really democratizing that approach. So if I use Rel AI, yeah. um, Granite, uh, and, and you get Instruct Lab with it, that yeah. you, you would indemnify against what? IP indemnity, so it okay. says like, hey, so so we, yeah, we can say, hey, this is where this comes from and we can guarantee that you're not going to be sued by somebody saying, hey, you put our IP into your model. And the other, the other interesting about RHEL is the edge, right? I mean, it's, it, RHEL can run anywhere. Yes. And so when you think about AI inferencing at the edge, Yes. RHEL can play a, a key part there. So, um, and OpenShift AI, to be frank. So, Edge uh, can come in a variety of flavors. Um, so, um, being able to serve up models at the Edge is mm -hmm. something a lot of our customers do, and obviously that draws down to smaller profile um, hardware. We also offer OpenShift as you know single node um, OpenShift or a small compact cluster, or there's even um, you know different variants there that they can run models within. We really do the model serving piece through OpenShift AI out to the Edge. 
edge. And so really the difference between like Rel AI and OpenShift AI is really like focus use case versus like enterprise adoption. And can you speak to the virtualization trends that are going on, how it might relate to your partnership with HPE generally and GreenLake specifically? Yeah, of course. Um, so, um, I'll speak to kind of the virtualization as like, a, I'll talk about the history of Red Hat around this. So, um, we inside of OpenShift, there's a capability called OpenShift virtualization. Okay, so that is not something you have to buy separately, it's something that comes with OpenShift. And what that is, is there's a project called Kubevert, and so that's based on KVM. So I think everybody in the industry knows KVM, like famously, like uh, NVIDIA runs their entire, like, uh, GPU cloud for gaming on KVM, right? So people have been doing uh, virtualization in a Kubernetes context, you know, at scale for a very long time. And we offer that capability within OpenShift. And so customers have been saying, hey, can we run this as our virtualization platform? We're like, you know, fantastic. And what happened last August is we looked at VMs and you can qualify a VM, like would it run well, it runs well in VMware, how well would it run in OpenShift Vert? And the feature set that we added last August took that from like a 20% of VMs are good candidates to 80% of VMs are good candidates. And so what's happened now is a lot of customers are saying, well, could we choose this you know, as an alternative for our virtualization platform? And so that's created a groundswell of interest around OpenShift in general. And it has like all sorts of like things that like happen after that we, we can explore. Well, so we had Rocco on earlier and we were explaining to the audience the whole changes in VMware's pricing strategies and, and essentially Broadcom doing exactly what it said it's going to do. Um, but there's a lot of workloads that don't need the entire suite of you know, VCF, et cetera. And so there's options out there and you guys are one. Yeah, so um, we've been you know, working with customers, they've been running OpenShift for, so a lot of people were running OpenShift on VMware, so that's like a good sure. portion of customers. Right. And, uh, more and more they're saying, hey, I'll just run this on bare metal. And that's where you run OpenShift Vert. And so from like a economic standpoint, it was really interesting to say, hey, I was paying for two things, I just pay for one now. Um, secondarily, when you run OpenShift Vert, you get your RHEL guests for free. So maybe in that virtualization context, they were paying for RHEL as you know, guests within that environment. Now those are free on top of OpenShift Vert. And then maybe they were running, you know, CentOS, right? And they're saying, oh, what do I do? It's end of life, you know, what, you know do I have to, you know, I got to you know, pay Red Hat for this. Like, we have great programs to convert people in that, but if you've moved to OpenShift Vert, you're going to get that for free too. So it's also a great way for people to look at what do they do with their CentOS strategy or other, you know, Linux distribution because it just comes with OpenShift Vert. Now what about um, HPE and GreenLake? How do you fit into that whole e equation? Well, we've been, I mean, as you know, yeah. the third time, right? We've been with GreenLake from the very beginning. Uh, we've been pioneers in the concept of hybrid cloud. And so GreenLake bringing pay as you go into the context of you know, the private cloud space and hybrid cloud is a great enabler for our platform. And so um, we started off, you, know, you launch a technology, you get your early customers, we're well into customer adoption and we can go through all of the different industries and say we have customers now in every industry together and we're watching them move to this consumption model within our platform and so monthly they're saying here's what we're using, that sort of thing, we get these consumption reports, it's very cloud-like, it's fantastic mm -hmm. and we're seeing two patterns more customers and we're also seeing that adoption ramp because when you have a consumption model, it's easy to consume and it's easy for people to try and become you know, consumers. So organizational expansion is happening at the same time. Right. So, I mean, you're describing a lot of benefits that customers are already realizing as they modernize their architecture, but what else are you hearing even about the, the announcements from Red Hat Summit, which is not that long ago, I know, in yeah. Colorado. Yeah. What, are you hearing things already from them, early reactions and responses? Yeah, so I would say um, just uh, a couple of things personally, right, that I'm closest to. There's a broad set of announcements, you know, Red Hat, but I draw in on the AI space and on OpenShift uh, in particular, and then, not to, I mean, we've started to talk about tech preview of image mode. I think next year we'll be talking more about image mode, but I think it's probably the most subtle cool technology that's tucked into REL AI. But um, in particular on the AI front, we have been on this march with NVIDIA. So we ran into each other at GTC, um, at Dave, and um, that was, um, 
on the back of us, uh, NVIDIA was introducing NIM, their NVIDIA Inference Microservice right. capability, which is really about encapsulation and ease of consumption. And so we were already showing how you can use that with OpenShift AI, like right out of the gate. And then we uh, added to that with, um, and, and even uh, last week, uh, NVIDIA was announcing like what we can do with them with KServe, so the ability to you know, serve up NIMs within OpenShift AI, and so that capability is continuing to snowball. And so like our partnership, you know, our you know, roadmaps between us and NVIDIA and capabilities are growing very strong. Mm. Separately with Intel, we announced, um, so we announced their new platform, their enterprise AI, so NVIDIA has AI Enterprise, and Intel has Enterprise AI. <laughs> and so we're really so close with them because if you think about it, really is a sandwich, right? You've got everything down to the kernel and then you have like the GPU and the driver and you have layers like CUDA and you have PyTorch and so at every layer we have to optimize with them and then we have to manifest into like real usability con concepts which we do with OpenShift AI for ML ops and they're helping to do with the consumability and the availability of these different things through NIM or through the packaging that uh, Intel's offering. Can, can we double click on two things? Yeah, please. Uh, image mode and Instruct Lab. Yeah. Explain in more detail image mode and, and help us understand sort of the, the roadmap and the adoption there. What's yeah, likely. so um, I, Red Hat Package Manager RPM, I think some people yep. are fairly familiar with that, right? Um, certainly more technical part of the audience. That's like how you know do packages within, uh, within RHEL. Uh, image mode is now, you can do a containerized delivery of the OS. So like, very logical, but nobody done it, right? So you have essentially, okay, all our applications are containerized. Why is the, you know, why are we doing packages in the OS? Why don't we containerize the whole thing? And so that's what image mode is in its like simplest concept. It's got this thing called Bootsy, which allows you to boot from a container. And so right now, like image mode, is, uh, sorry, rel AI is like an immutable container that you just deploy to the server. And so when you think about like over time, that becomes a concept of like velocity and tooling. So like all of the great tooling in DevOps, right, that we know about delivering containers and you know, repositories and you know, all that stuff can now be leverageable for infrastructure. And so I think it's a very powerful concept and I think they're going to see a lot of you know, interesting concepts and approaches come out of Red Hat and our ecosystem as we start to push this beyond Rel AI and beyond Tech Preview with uh, image mode. And there's a security aspect to it as well because it essentially simplifies the deployment because it's immutable. Yes. Right? Yeah. And, and so that just checks one of the many boxes. I mean, you know I the applications have all these security yeah. concepts built around containers. So like, why not yeah. leverage that than like have two different things, right? So, um, so anyway, it's early days. Yeah. Um, but I, when I first saw it, I was like, oh my gosh. I felt like, I got the call from Doc Cloud when they said, hey Ryan, we're going to change and we're going to become Docker. They go call Brian Stevens, our former CTO, and like, yeah, let's yeah. have this conversation. So I was like, oh, this must be cool, right? And so I learned about it. So I'm kind of having that moment again of like, oh, this, we're changing the OS, right? So um, I'm a big fan. So yeah, well, yeah. We'll, well, we should we, talk in Struck Lab. Like we, the, we, we, I, I, I just wanted to point out, so Stu and John Furrier were at, I believe it was the first, where, where they were there for that announcement at the first DockerCon. Um, in Struck Lab, very cool, the story I heard, uh, was basically you know, the IBM labs had developed this tech, Matt Hicks evidently yeah. caught wind of it. Yes. Uh, or maybe somebody tapped on his shoulder and said, you got to look at this, who knows how that actually went down. And then that began a collaboration and you guys are bringing this to market. But explain Instruct Lab and we'll get into some of the magic. Well, so behind the scenes, right? Yeah. And so, um, we always work very closely with IBM Research, right? Because we're always looking at the ecosystem. So uh, myself and like a couple other folks helped like create this thing called Open Data Hub that became OpenShift AI. And so it was all like ecosystem collaboration and we were kind of working with IBM in that class. So we're always behind the scenes with them, like figuring out like, where's this going? How can we better help our customers? How can we drive the community around it? So out of Instruct Lab, we saw this real great opportunity First, the Granite model and open sourcing that and making that you know, available um, within RHEL AI and, and with OpenShift AI. But the Instruct Lab capability is really, it's really in a democratization approach and democratizing AI, we always hear about click, click, click ops, that sort of thing. Um, what this is, is like, you can go in and you can enter your you know, knowledge and data directly in as a non-coder practitioner and participate in a community that then selects the best data uh, and knowledge from that, like simple YAML files into um, something that becomes Becomes, uh, we do synthetic data generation, and that creates enough data so that it can be fine-tuned trained to reweight the, the foundational model to now have your data in it, and then that's what becomes out of it. So, um, and Struggle is just a great way, you can, you can do it on your laptop and participate in the community. You can do a little kind of like 
practice kind of what they call inner loop, which is like playing your laptop and try things out before it goes in the outer loop and it gets like fully fine tuned and everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so it's really cool because, you know, it broadens the number of people that can um, uh, put their knowledge and data into this generative AI era. And I know you got to go, but uh, just a real quick, it's, there's a training, we all know about training, and then when you tune, you have to have a lot of human interaction with Instruct Lab, you feed it a little bit of human interaction, and then it's sort of autodidactic from there, which is quite amazing. Yeah, um, it's, it's very just, fun. Yeah. I mean, just to have um, such, uh, I mean, everything in generative AI is so amazing and, and enlightening, right? Um, to have, to be able to contribute something that's novel and, yeah. um, and it broadens the number of people that can participate in it. It feels you know, great personally from a company that's all about community, right, and, and openness. Very cool. No, yeah. and I was there when it was announced and to hear Matt Hicks talk about it, and it really, it's driving this learning culture too at, at Red Hat, but at, at yeah. other organizations too. So it was, it's He really put it out and it was, uh, you know, it had a code name internally at first and everybody's like, everybody needs to go in and just like, Inner stuff they know and just go do it, right? <laughs> and so we all got like running this private, you know, GitHub repo, and we're just, you know, typing stuff in and trying stuff out, and then suddenly we're like, oh wow, we're all doing this. Yeah. 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 Which is cool because no one's like one one person, right? Like they, right. they you know, right. can't hire that many of them, right? Like yeah. they really know how to do the really makes deep stuff. Makes it fun. Stuff. Makes it makes it as you said a community. Yeah. Ryan, thank you so much for coming on the cube. It's great having you on. Thank you so much. Yeah. Great to see you again, John. You know. You know I'm Rebecca Knight for Dave Vellante. <laughs> Stay tuned for more of the Cube's live coverage of. HPE Discover 2024. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech news and analysis.